everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I have Magical Jungle by Joanna Basford, and I have a few pencils laying over here off to the side. And if you notice, if you saw my last video, these are the colors I used in my color combination video, all of the uh, greens that I had suggested that y'all could use for leaves in your coloring book. So many people have requested that I come back with a video where I apply some of those techniques that I showed you in my previous tips, tricks, and hacks on how to improve your coloring skills. And I shared those color combinations that would be really fabulous to use on some leaves. So many of you wanted me to bring that to a coloring book. And so I have a page in this book that I have already started. I started it with my Pablo pencils, but my plan for the page was to make the leaves all different colors. So I thought that this would be the perfect page to work on this. I had started this page quite a while ago, and I think that Y'all have seen it if you've seen my video quite a long time ago. I don't remember what the video was on. It might have been a tutorial on how to use the Pablo pencils. I don't remember, but these leaves that are on this page, my plan was to color all of the leaves on this page all different colors and kind of balance it out by doing the same thing on both sides. And that's why these leaves are these colors and they are kind of just balanced out with the same colors on varying sides. Of course, I still have to come back and finish this one over here, and then I'm gonna make these on this side match. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you guys know how I always teach you about balance and how to bring balance to your coloring pages. Of course, this bird here is going to be the same over here on this side, and I'll probably just color it a little bit differently and change the colors around, but this one will have all the same colors as this one does, just in varying places. So that's what we're going to do today. If you enjoy videos like this and you would like to continue seeing my content, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn your bell notifications on so that you always get notified every time I post a new video. In the description box below, you will find links down there for my Facebook group, my email list, and my Patreon if you would like to support me over there. As always, I appreciate all of you that support me in no matter what way that you do. So let's go ahead and get into this video. When I showed this color combination in my last video, I had said that you would never normally usually think that these colors would actually go together. And I showed you exactly how to blend them together so that they would go together. And they look really, really beautiful. This is one of my absolute favorite color combinations. So I think I'm gonna start with that one. This one is Moss, Chartreuse, and Cream. And so I'm going to get my Moss and my Chartreuse and my Cream. And we are going to bring this to our coloring page. I think I may have used white as well, just to add in some extra highlights when I was showing you the technique that I was using for that particular box. Let me go ahead and grab my pencil sharpener. You guys know that my favorite pencil sharpener, I don't use anything else, is this Doll 133. And when I'm doing leaves, I always wanna make sure that I have a pretty sharp tip on my Prismacolors. No matter what you're coloring, whether you're coloring leaves or whatever you're coloring, if you're doing anything aside from burnishing, if you're just burnishing and kind of using your lightest color or your white to bring all of your colors together, it's fine to have a duller tip. It actually works better. But when you are trying to create and you're trying to add textures and just be really creative and bring colors together and blend them together the way that you want them to be or the way that you want them to look, it is always best to have beautiful sharp tips just like this. So I think I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start on these and I'm gonna to have to remember what I'm doing because I want to later come to the other side of the page and create that balance and do the same thing on the same leaves on the other side. So let's go ahead and 
These that are turning sideways, they're kind of cool, but this one I really want to do in just an open leaf. So I think we're going to go ahead and do this one with these colors. So let me go ahead, and I think I'm going to start with my cream. And again, like I always do, I kind of have an image or how I want it to look in my mind. But you guys know that doesn't necessarily mean that's the way it's going to turn out. Now I'm going to add some of my chartreuse in here. And this is a very bright, vibrant color. And I think I just want it kind of in the edges or the outer edges of the leaf for now and I'm kind of bringing it down just a little bit onto where the vein of the flower or the vein of the leaf is. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to come back with my moss green and I want to first kind of add a little bit of shadows in here with this color because you could clearly see that like I show you in all of my videos right here we've got this leaf and it's kind of laying to the front of this leaf over here. So I always like to add my darkest of colors behind whatever is laying to the forefront so that I can create that shadow which will create more depth. And I'm just kind of blending these colors in like all over and bringing them together and then I'm going to come up in here and I really want the tip of the leaf this is where I kind of start to add a little bit of my own I don't know artistic or creative twist on things I always love for the veins of the flower to really just kind of stand out. I keep saying flower, you guys know I mean to say leaf. <laughs> the veins of the leaf. <laughs> Let's practice that 20 times. Okay. I'm going to try not to say flower again. You guys know how much I love to, to color flowers. And I'm going to have to bring you guys another flower coloring video here very soon. Everybody keeps asking me, you guys must really love when I do flowers because that is like my number one requested video along with my tips and tricks and hacks on how to improve your coloring skills series. Okay, so I've added quite a bit of color in here, just in different areas. And see, now it's kind of coming together very differently because this isn't really what I had imagined when I first laid the colors down on the paper, but I like how it's looking. So I'm going to kind of go over this with that chartreuse. If you remember when I did that tutorial, I showed you how to mix these two colors together, the chartreuse with the moss green, to kind of create another variance of the color. And that's what I've been trying to show you guys in some previous videos how you may have 150 colors, even those of you that have 36 colors and can't afford to purchase more than that. You may be on a limited budget or whatever, and you've only got maybe a 36 set of Prisma colors. I've been trying to show you guys that you can have 36 colors, but you've got way more colors than just 36 because 
there is just so much that you can do and so many colors you can create from the colors that you have by just blending some colors together. You can blend two colors together, you can blend three colors together, and you can create so much more than what you see in front of you. It's all about just experimenting with your colors. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of definition here to the outsides of these leaves. And I don't want to add too much in here because I really want to come in on this leaf and bring in a darker color behind that one since that leaf is kind of behind this leaf. Let's go ahead and start coming in with another layer. I've got a little bit of a flat line here, so I'm going to use my chartreuse and add a little bit of more of that in there. Look how pretty and bright that is. I love this color. I would love to know from you guys in the comments below what your favorite color is in the Prismacolor set. So if you have the 150 set of Prismacolors, or even if you have a smaller set, what is your favorite color? Or what are some of the colors that you notice in your set that are much smaller than the others because you use them way more often and are always sharpening them? So now I'm coming back here and adding a little bit more of the cream to just to kind of pull it all together. But look how pretty that is now that it's applied to a leaf. Isn't that gorgeous? And I love that I was able to pull this coloring book back out again. Because I've not colored in here in so long and I love Joanna's coloring books. Now, if you wanted it to be just a little bit darker, you can come back with your moss green and you can just go over that one more time and look at the difference in how that just creates even more depth. And then you've really got that depth there in the center. When you do this, make sure that the tip of your pencil is very, very sharp. I love when my veins just, my veins of my leaf just really stand out. I don't like when my veins are subtle because if you do that, it really changes your leaf and really just makes it pop off the page. You see now that I'm coming back and I'm just going over with this darkest color and I'm just adding color in the areas where I just really want it to just completely pop. But like, see where I'm trying to get here, right at the edge of the leaf? I want to make sure that I have a really, really sharp tip because I want to just really push down a little bit harder and to look how that just makes that pop. And then here I told you I didn't want to do it too much there because I want to do this leaf back here and I want it to really stand out. And I want it to look as though it is behind the other ones. Now if you wanted to pull in another color to add even more depth, you can always do that too. I want you guys to see what can be created just by using very minimal colors. And what I can do just by coming back and using light pressure and then harder pressure 
Look at all the different things you can do with leaves and like there's a lot of leaves on this page and I intend to have them be all different colors. And so because I colored this one using this color combination, I'm going to come over here to the other side and the leaf that matches it, it's going to uh, be exactly the same. It will have the same colors, but I may just lay the colors in different places dependent upon where I want it to look like the light is actually hitting the leaf. So now I'm thinking that we should use some of the other color combinations that we came up with on that previous video. Really, technically, there was only one other color combination because one of them I just kind of swapped out the highlight color. And I think with this one, I actually added in a little bit of white. So like here, where I have an area that is much brighter and I wanted to keep lighter, I could actually come in there and just lay a little bit of white over that. And then up in here, and then also in this area too. And then if you do that, it's also just going to pull the colors together. And if you wanted to totally burnish it out and come over here where you've got the darker colors, all you would have to do is once it lightened it up a little bit, you can just come back with your moss green and you can go over those once again. But let's go ahead and bring some other colors here in our other color combination. Maybe we should do this leaf here since it's bigger and leave these alone. Yeah, let's do the other colors in this one that is kind of flipped up. That's a really cool leaf, the way that it is just kind of flipped up. So in the other color combination that we used, which was, there's two of them here. This one was the, what did I write here? Sap green light, pale sage, and the gray green light. And the gray green light is a gorgeous, gorgeous color, but it looks very grayish white, but still has green in it. So it's a very, very light to where you just want to make something look like, say you were coloring a leaf and you wanted to make it look like there was a lot of light hitting it and you just wanted the highlight to look more white, like there was a lot of reflective light. That would be a really good color to use. And then in this one, I think I left a lot of white area using the white of the paper, but I also added in cream. And so I think on this first one, I don't know, maybe we should add all the colors together. Let's go ahead and just start and, and see where we get with it. So let me go ahead and sharpen my pencils. My poor pale sage is almost nothing. <laughs> so let me see if I could actually sharpen it. So many of you have asked me too, like when you have a pencil that is this short, I probably have another one somewhere that I could go grab, but I want to show you guys this. I did pull it out, and when it's this length, you can still just kind of push it in there. Hopefully you could see that. And then you can still sharpen it like this. And then when it gets shorter to where it's not fitting in there anymore, you don't ever have to pull this out on your doll 133. You could just push this put the pencil in and turn the lever. And then when it stops, just turn it again, push the pencil in and then turn it again rather. And then you will be able to still sharpen it. But I think this one is still big enough to where I don't need to put a pencil extender on it quite yet. Maybe we'll do this one with the gray green light and then we'll do this one sitting behind it with the cream. That may be very cool. So what I like to do in leaves that are like this is I like to come in the center. This is my gray green light. And I'm just going to color in the centers like that. And then let me, I think I wanna add right here where the veins are. I wanna add a little bit of color Did I go 
all the way up. I can't even tell. I think I did. Yeah, I did. And on this one, I'm just going to put more pale sage up here in the corner or at the tip of the leaf just because I want that area to be darker and I want the highlights to be in the other places. In leaves that are turned up like this, I really just like the highlight being right in the center. Now you could always do it when you were doing a leaf like this, like say you felt like the light was hitting it at this angle. You can also um, do these few leaves here and leave them to where they look like the light is hitting them and then kind of come darker up in this area. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should go ahead and do... Yeah, let's go ahead and do that and see how this one looks. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing now. See how I just changed my mind. <laughs> I'm sitting here talking saying, oh, you can do this if you wanted to, but let me go ahead and just show you. So we're going to leave these lighter as if the light was coming down this way and hitting that leaf at the bottom. And then I'm going to come in with my sap green light, which is, these are all very light colors. So I don't know how much depth and dimension I'm actually going to be able to create on this leaf. I'm kind of wondering if I should bring in another color just to create more depth. Again, here we go on the on the veins. I just really like to line my veins of my leaves because I feel like that's really what just makes them go pop right off the page. Okay, and so these three down here are the ones that I want to have much more highlight. So let me go ahead and pull this down a little bit more on these. Now see, this is not my normal style of the way that I would color it, but I just wanted to try something different. And this is to show you guys too that it's all about experimenting so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to fully go over this top part and then fully go over this area here. And then the same thing again for this one. And then I think right here is where we could start making it look like we've got a little bit of reflection. So I'm going to leave this little space right here kind of open. And then I want these down here. Let me add just where the vein is. I'm going to add some more color of my darkest shade, the sap green light. And then I'm going to come back and I'm really going to add just this lighter gray green light on these here and then in this area here. Now I'm being very careful here not to pull the colors all the way through because like I said I wanted that area to be lighter. And then here I'm going to kind of blend all these together. Now see, because we have such lighter colors on this leaf, I don't know if you guys notice it, but I do because I like my things to just kind of really pop off the page much more. So we're going to see how much more color we could bring to this by adding a little bit more of the sap green light. Just some more layers just to kind of brighten it up. And I am using much harder pressure here. 
It is adding a little bit more depth. If you can see that. And it makes most of the difference where I have a much lighter color, like where I've got the uh, gray green light, like in here, because it shows a big difference in the variance of colors there. And then let's come back with one more layer here. I went and grabbed my Kelly Green. If you look at these two, they are very similar, but the Kelly Green is just a little bit darker. And I want to, I wanted to have something to be able to color the stem in because I don't want the stem to just kind of sit there and not look like it doesn't have any dimension. So I think I'm going to go ahead and bring in my Kelly Green. And I am going to use my Kelly Green for this vein. I think I said stem earlier, but this would be I don't know. Is this the stem? Is it the vein? What is it? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'll say this part of the leaf. And then I think I'm going to come in here and just darken these up. And I think this is going to make all the difference in the world. And I hope you guys can see like from this video or this little experiment that it doesn't make a difference sometimes. Just by bringing in one more color because as I go over this vein here you guys can see that it's just kind of making it pop. because we really don't have a whole lot of different colors in this combination. This one, when we did this one, the colors are so different that it's just like, pow, <laughs> right off the page. So that makes a huge difference. And I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kind of pull these together. With my highlight color. And then we're going to come down to this bottom one. And in the bottom one, I think we're going to have a much different experience with the bottom one because we're going to use cream for our highlight color instead. And because we have a variance in the colors, it's going to be, or it's going to look much different. But I didn't want my leaves to kind of blend into one another. I want them to really stand apart from each other. So we are now going to get rid of our gray green light and we are going to bring in our cream for this last leaf. Now these are the only leaves that I'm going to color in this video but I just wanted to be able to show you what you can do with these colors. And then as you saw there what our experience with that was we had to just bring in color that was a little bit darker just to make a difference. And see, I keep going back and I'm just like, oh, that doesn't look good. I like to just really make sure things that I color just really stand out and are kind of eye popping. And I really want to add some Posca to that one, like right here where I wanted to keep it whiter. 
So now I'm going to come back with the cream and we're going to do this one. And since I have this one done, I kind of have an idea of what I want this one to look like. I think I'm probably going to come back and change a little bit of things with that one. But let's go ahead and I'm going to add my cream. And then I am going to come back with, oh my gosh, what are these colors? The Kelly Green. Am I keeping the Kelly Green? I don't know. We're going to see. Let me go ahead. Oh. Okay. Let's use the Pale Sage and kind of come in here and add some color. And I think I'm going to need more color in these areas because right here, because this leaf is kind of laying over the top, it would mean that the highlight would be more to the tip of the leaf because this one's laying on the top, but this one is laying behind it or under it, if you can see that from the picture. So we kind of want the highlight to be here at the end where we would imagine the sun would hit this more and not necessarily where there is something covering it. So let me go ahead and use my Kelly Green. And I'm going to pull that through just a little bit with my sap green light. And then I'm going to do the sap green light up into here where it should probably still look a little bit darker. But see, I'm kind of going over that cream, so you could still see the cream kind of shining through, which is really cool. And that is what I showed you also in that previous video where I was showing you the different techniques. Now, I could tell already that this one's going to look way different just because we are going to be using the cream. And I'm just kind of going over this one, but I don't want to pull it too much because I want a lot of cream up here in the top part of the leaf that's kind of hanging down. So I'm going to come up here and I'm really going to push a little bit harder with this cream color. Look how beautiful this color is though. I love, love, love this color. It's my absolute favorite. I use it with everything and like so with so many different color families. Okay, so I think I have the colors kind of laid where I want them, but we need to create a little bit more depth and dimension here. This is my Kelly Green. Oh, this is really cool. Now see the difference when you've got colors from really two different color families and the difference here where we've got this color and then we have the cream. It makes a huge difference. And this is a really good lesson because you guys will be able to see the difference that it makes in these two leaves and how much more this one is probably going to pop off the page just by switching out and using the Kelly Green, which is a tad bit darker. If you look at these two, you could tell that they really are the same type of colors, but this one is a few levels darker than this one. And so that's why it was kind of the perfect pick to be able to do this with. But I don't want to come too close here where I have the stem because the stem, again,
is going to be my Kelly Green, and I think I'm going to add a little bit of the Sap Green Light just to kind of pull this down and blend it in. And then I'm going to pull this up even further because, like I said earlier, there should only be the uh, highlighted area up in this top part of this leaf. And so now I'm going to come over here and just go over that with the cream. And I'm going to make sure the tip of my Kelly Green is fairly sharp. Let me go ahead and give it a really quick sharpen here. Just a couple times there just to make sure it's really, really sharp. And I am going to make sure... Oh my gosh, trying to get the angle and film at the same time so you guys can, to make sure y'all can see. Sometimes it's a little difficult, so I don't want to get rid of that cream. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I don't want to get rid of that cream. I'm just kind of adding a little bit of definition in here. Because remember, sometimes when you color, you're going to cover up some of the black lines, but there are some black lines that when I'm coloring, I really don't want to get rid of. I want them to still be there because that's what helps me create the dimension that I'm trying to create so that my leaf just kind of really stands out. And not even just a leaf, but like a flower or like this bird here, whatever it is you're coloring. Okay, so let me go ahead and come in here and add a little final touches to this. So this is my sap green light. And I'm just kind of pulling these colors through a little bit. I think I need to kind of line right in here just to make sure this is really stand. Oh, look at the difference there. Oh, beautiful. I think I need to do that to this one. That makes a huge difference. I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some more to this one, but I just want you guys to see the difference that it makes just because I added in that cream or swapped out the um, the gray green light is that what it's called swapping out the gray green light and adding in this Kelly green look at this as I just go over this vein here how it just starts to really give it dimension and make it pop and then right here we need to make sure that this one is really going to pop as well but still be a little bit darker and then I'm going to come in with my sap green light and I'm going to pull some of that through because like I said earlier there would be less highlights in this area here So I really want this darker here, just so that this leaf here, again, looks like it is to the front. And then I'm going to, and then we add just a teeny tiny bit of cream in here. And then if you wanted to, you could come burnish it out with the cream too, and just kind of pull all those colors together. And you guys do not always have to stick to greens when you're coloring leaves. Greens can be so many different colors as you can see with my leaves up here. They look more like a fall leaf and they got browns and yellows in them. And I was doing these here with a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow, more like um, ochre type yellows. 
So we'll see what those look like when I come back and I finish those, but I need to go back and look through my camera roll. I always take pictures of my, um, that's another really great idea. When you guys are coloring something, always get your uh, smartphones out and snap a picture holding your uh, pencils next to it and always keep track of your color combinations because it's been a very long while since I've colored this page and I'll be able to go back into my camera roll and I'll be able to pull that up so that I could see exactly what I colored that with and what colors that I used so I could come back and I could finish these and then do the other ones that are on the opposing side. So I think I'm going to do one more little thing to this. And I'm going to get out my Posca and I want to add some highlights into this one just to kind of brighten it up a little bit and see if that helps at all. And it actually does. I hope it can be seen on camera. Sometimes I really wonder when I'm doing something, if it's really making a difference to what you guys are watching, because I'll be looking at it and it's making such a huge difference to me. But then I wonder if it's actually seen on camera. Oh, that made quite a bit of difference. But I'm trying to get these pens to flow a little bit better. Sometimes you just really have to work with them and keep pumping them to get them to do what you want them to do. But this is really making a difference. I love it. Oh yeah, that's so pretty. Maybe I'll add just a little bit on these as well. Oh, I love that. And I'm tapping it out just because I don't want... Oh, that one look, came perfect the first time. Yeah, I'm tapping it out because I just don't want it to just create like some kind of flat look on my coloring page. And then right in here. Oh, that one went perfect. You have to be really careful when you're rubbing the colors out. And if, like here, I don't like what happened here, so I'm just going to come back with my Kelly Green. And I'm just going to go back over it right here and add that color back in just to make that stem stand out. Don't ever think, y'all, that you messed up because you more than likely did not. And then I'll do the same thing back over here where I added the Posca. Okay, so we are done. Those are my leaves with the same colors that I showed you in these color in this last color combination. So we used this one, this one, and this one. Just as you guys requested, and I love the way that it turned out. Of course, we added some Posca and we brought in the Kelly Green, but I don't think that's really big of a, you know, that big of a deal. That just goes to show you that when you create color combinations and you put the colors together and you're testing them off to the side on something else, you may come to an object on a coloring page and start coloring it and be like, well, you know, like I need to change this or I need to do this differently. Now, if I wasn't trying to stick with the same colors, I prob probably for this one here would have gone with a much more varying um, color or something that was much different. Like here, this one stands out much more because I was able to use the cream and then come in and add the Posca. So in this one, I've got the highlights with the cream and then I've got some more highlights because of the Posca. 
So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Everything that you've seen in this video will be in the description box below. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Happy coloring. Bye.